Hello, my name is Khalil and we're gonna build a small IoT project which can be a guide or a template for your future projects using SmartWorks IoT platform from Alter. But first of all, we're gonna do a small introduction for IoT where we're gonna talk about typical or standard IoT architecture which is the most commonly used. An implementation of Internet of Things cannot be possible without the presence of smart objects or devices like wireless sensors or actuators can be used to respond to their surroundings and make the data they collect available for analysis. Actuators can take this step further because they can interact in a meaningful way with the environment. They can, for example, turn on and off valves when the water level reaches certain level or simply turn off the light when the sun rises. Internet gateways, which is one of the most important and mandatory components in our architecture, where data from sensors must be aggregated and converted into digital form before it can be processed. It essentially prepares the data for processing. The data acquisition system is in charge of aggregating and converting the data. It's what connects the sensor and actuators, compile all of their data and converts it into digital form where the gateway can route it over the network. IoT Cloud Platform, where data storage is an important stage of an IoT architecture where data must be saved for further in-depth analysis. In IoT implementations, cloud storage is the most preferred storage method, where SmartWorks IoT platform provides you with more than that. It gives you the ability to manage and visualize your data, to control your IoT system and modify your IoT architecture using secure and easy commands, also provides you with APIs ready to use and implement for different applications. Anything DB is a database used in SmartWorks IoT platform and it has been designed to store anything for an IoT project. Anything DB follows the Web of Things standards, a set of standardized technology building blocks that helps to simplify IoT application development. One of the key components that it provides is the Thing Description, a central building block to model any asset using three basic attributes. Properties describe the characteristics of our thing. Example of properties like a sensor value read-only or configuration parameters like read and write. Actions define how we can interact with our asset, changing properties over time, such as stop or start an engine. Also events sensorizes the messages received from our asset, like give a signal when a door open a door closed. This is an example for a thing schema. So, Things Schema provides a standard schema definition for the things in your world, compliant with the web of things, thing description, and built on top of the popular JSON schema definition. One of the mandatory and most important services or protocols that the SmartWorks platform provides is an MQTT broker. And to understand better how it works, we have in this architecture a data source, which is a temperature sensor that sends the temperature data to the broker. And after, you can use this data to visualize it, to create your mobile application through it, or to make some sort of automation to control your system. To access the MQTT broker, we need an ID, a password, a host, and a port, which is by default 1883. And we just can send and receive the data. And as in the example, we are publishing or sending the data to a topic sensor value with a 25 as a value. And on the client side, we are subscribing or reading the data of a topic sensor value to analyze it or implement it in one of the applications. In advance, a now zero authorization method is implemented to the platform where you can access to your data in a secure way. Also, the platform gives you the ability to add more than one thing manually or automatically, and that's what we're gonna do in the application using HTTP protocol. Hypertext transfer protocol is the best example of IoT network protocol. This protocol has formed the foundation of data communication over the web. It's the most common used protocol for IoT devices when there is a lot of data to be published. However, HTTP protocol is not preferred because it costs battery life, energy saving, and more constraints. And that's why we are using MQTT to send the data frequently from a sensor. HTTP supports several different request commands, which is called HTTP method. Every HTTP request has a method. The method tells the server what action to perform. It's really helpful and important to know about the HTTP response status code. 
that would help you to know about your HTTP request statue. Maybe you have a problem with the token, maybe the server has a problem, and maybe everything works well. So let's start with the practice. Mainly the project, we're gonna use an Arduino Nano 33IoT port because it has an integrated Wi-Fi module, some electronics, and we're gonna connect it to the Smartworks IoT platform. In order to start this tutorial, you need to download the project files where we'll find all the code. You need to open them in the Arduino IDE. We'll have the main. The most basically important file is the credentials, where we will modify our uh, Wi-Fi uh, credentials, uh, the MQTT username and password, the HTTP token, and we have here the HTTP file where we will use the post, get and delete method and we have the sensor where we will pu publish the, uh, the data. Also, we have the link to our uh, topics in the publish topic data and publish topic. And just let's start with the platform. After creating an account, we need to log into the platform and you create a new space. And simply I'm gonna call it workshop and click create. We need to enter to the space. In this page, we need to create a new category by clicking on the blue button or clicking here in the middle of the page. And I'm gonna call it sensors. Create. And the same thing with things. I'm gonna give it the title of weather. We can add a description, add a model or skip to the schema and just click create. And after creating the weather as a thing, we'll have a thing ID and a link to our thing. And we're gonna need it to subscribe and publish the data. Uh, we can add descriptions or edit the description that we wrote it before in the beginning. And we need to add the properties. I'm gonna type temperature. The type of our temperature, it's gonna be numbers. And we can start with add an initial value, like giving it a minimum and maximum value and we just gonna need to create. Okay, so in interfaces, we're gonna need the MQTD because that's what we're gonna use. Uh, we need to generate a new password or if you forget your password, you just need to generate a new one by clicking on auto generate and save. First of all, I'm gonna copy my username and paste it in the credentials file in the username MQTT. And the same thing with the password. Password would be here. For MQTT, we need the host. So the host, or we can find everything in the documentation by clicking here on the documentation and we need to go to access to API documentation, go, in, go to MQTT, and here where the server is. We need to connect to this host. So that's what is written here. And also for the bureau token, uh, which is what we need to connect to the HTTP API by clicking in the API inspector and we need to go to header and this is our bureau code you just need to need to copy it and paste it here as a new token for HTTP the server address for HTTP is the same one that it's here and also we can find it in the documentation in order to start receiving the data First of all, we need to connect the, our sensor to the analogic pin, which is A0 in this example, and we will use an LDR sensor. And we need to go to the topic, topics publish and edit our topic link, which we're gonna take it from here. Okay, so this is the link. 
spaces project it's okay this way and we just paste it here Oops. so the publish topic data is to send the data to the row history and you can access to the row history by clicking on this icon so here where we'll find the row history also we need to update our property data with this link which is spaces and just need to modify this part and and that's all basically also we should go to the sensors and we should modify the, ch the json let's say sentence that we will send using the arduino to temperature and just send the code to the board and by checking the serial monitor we'll see the message where it should be connected and should be start sending the data and here is it so we should receive some data here okay so we have the temperature data is changing also we have some data is coming to the row history also we can check on the MQTT inspector well, we can check on the spaces, categories, and we have the data that we're receiving here. So now, we have a lot of data, and it's better to visualize our data. So we just go to real-time visualization, workbooks, and we'll need to create a new workbook. Enter, and a new workbook. I'm gonna let the default name create so we need to create a data table we can edit the name and I'm gonna choose the streaming MQTT and we'll edit our credentials so we'll go to credentials and I'm gonna just copy from here because it's too much easier so paste the topic I'm gonna let it later. Username, which is the same, which is the user ID. Password, which is the password we have for MQTT. And I'm gonna come back to the topic, which is the topic or the data from the row history. Paste it. So now we're already receiving the data, so we can generate columns so we wait a bit so the column the columns has been generated and we need just to click on the temperature start preview and change it to the automatic time ID and transform settings to the transform enable time analysis and we need just to save go back and we need to create our graph by selecting the area that we want and choosing the time series visualization i'm gonna choose lines go drag and drop the temperature to the ergreg axis and we are receiving the data and this is the data that we are receiving from the LDR sensor and now we will use the HTTP protocol to manage the architecture and add some categories so first of all we will go to the documentation and anything DB and we already can use or try the HTTP from here just with linking the viewer code by going to API inspector header and I just need the viewer code paste it here and authorize so 
I will use this post to create a new category and I need to click on try it out and set up the name to our space name which is workshop and just click execute and you will receive a new, a new category with electronic board's name which is which should be here and this is our new category so now we'll try to check our categories from the using the get method try it out workshop execute and this is the categories that we have so I'm gonna end up with deleting the category that I created and move to the Arduino now workshop execute and it should be deleted so in the Arduino I will able this line of codes because I'm gonna use a button and this is the get HTTP so in the HTTP code we'll have a gate HTTP function and a post HTTP function. I'm gonna create a new functions using the post HTTP and I'm gonna set up the name of my new categories as sensors like sensors1, sensors2, sensor3 with a counter and we'll enable this line to enable the post and just we'll upload the code to the board wait a bit we'll check from the serial monitor and go back to the Smartworks platform. So we should have new categories by clicking on the button. Just we need to, bit, to wait a bit till it's connected. So those are the categories that we have. And I'm gonna click button. The button is clicked. And I should receive a new category. I'm gonna go to the page. And this is my category. So, in order to delete this category, I'm gonna command this line and able two lines, upload the code again by clicking the button. This category, this new category, should be deleted. Okay, I'm gonna check the serial monitor again. Wait, it's connected. Okay, it's connected, so I'm gonna click the button. And okay, our category should be deleted. The purpose of this workshop and the codes provide is to help you building your own system and develop your own code. So I hope this video was helpful, and now you can start enjoying creating your IoT projects.